let's build some eyes for our creature. So uh, the eyes that I'm going to build are going to be three pieces and they're going to be a little bit different than eyes that we might build for more of a human character, just because you can see the socket for this character. And because it's more on the side and it's so big, you're going to see more of the side of the eyeball because we still want it to be looking forward. And so normally you would have, you know, flesh and bone on the side and you'd only see the front. And for this one, we're going to have kind of a bird eye, but I don't want it to be pointing out. I still want it to be uh, more of a predatory kind of a look. And so that means uh, we're going to create something that is a little bit different structure wise than a more human looking guy, but we'll have the same number of pieces. So I'm going to start by just bringing in a polygon primitive sphere. And let me actually turn off our geometry. I'm going to add our final geometry there. And let's go take a look at this eye. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the radius maybe to three or so and always scale it back down. And then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees in the X just so the pole is pointing toward where the pupil is going to be. Now I'm going to take my subdivisions along the height. I'm just going to reduce those down a little bit just so there it's a little bit more square because I know I'm going to be smoothing this. Okay. So now this is going to be the outer part. So I'm going to hit control D to duplicate, go back and select that initial one. And then I'm just going to scale it up just a little bit. And I'm going to call this I outer. And then let's go ahead and hide it. So now we're working on our second piece. So the next thing we want to do is create the iris and the pupil. So think of this as the eyeball. And then the iris, normally if it was like a human eye, we would put it kind of up here. But I wanted to actually encompass most of the radius of this sphere this time. And so in that case, I'm actually going to go to the side view here. And I'm going to start to pull these lines in. Okay. We can also scale kind of like that and pull them in like so. Okay. So something like that. Now when doing a human eye, you might even make this uh, concave, but I'm going to leave this convex and then we're going to have some cool effects we could do with the refraction of the, uh, the outer part of the eye to make it look a little bit cooler. And so we also want to have the pupil. So we can define where that pupil is going to be. I think I'm going to go ahead and select the, the very center and then we can hit shift and the up arrow. So it would be a period and we can grow our selection. So if that is kind of between where you want it, you can always insert another edge loop, but I think that'll probably work. You could even maybe go one more thinking about what that'll look like. We do want to have a, a fairly big pupil. So it's kind of, it's up to you. I'll go ahead and select the smaller one. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead, instead of deleting this, I am going to extract it. So now we have two pieces. I'll go ahead and shift P to drop it out of the hierarchy. We will delete our history. which will clean that up a little bit. Delete our history on this. Drop this piece out of that group. And then this piece, I'm going to come to the side view. Go ahead and center our pivot, go to scale. And I'll just scale this down until it's straight. And then I'm going to move it back inside here. And I don't want to be able to see, see that opening. I don't want to be able to see that. And so I want this to cover as much of this as we can. So something like that. Okay. We can also come in here, add another loop kind of right in here and maybe take this border edge move it down just a little and let's also add kind of another edge right up in here so we get something like that now i like to actually add some simple materials whenever i'm working with the eye it helps me when i'm building the rest of the character to have kind of a little bit of an eye in there and so let's go into our hyper shade and i'm going to pull this down i'm going to create a few materials here so go into create materials i'm going to create a surface shader that's black. We'll call this 
pupil. And then I'm also going to create, yeah, let's just do a simple fong or a blin, either one. And let's go ahead and turn on our eye outer. Now I'm going to add the eye outer. I'm going to make, I'm going to give it that fong material. And then with that material, material selected, going to turn up the transparency. These are not our materials we're going to be using to render. They are just some temporary materials here. I'm going to also take the pupil, assign it the surface shader. We can also rename these. I inner, I outer, and pupil. And that gives us something like this. And you're not seeing the refraction that we'll get with our Arnold render. We'll see that in a future course. So I'm going to go ahead and take all of these, control G to group them together. We'll call this I group. And now let's turn our geometry back on, take our I group, and let's move one into position here. Okay, so we'll need to scale it depending on the size that you've created it as. And we'll push it into the eye socket there. And let me go and change this to object. And you can see we've got a little bit of geometry intersecting with the eye. And so we'll be able to fix that. There we go. Had it a little bit too big there. We want it to sit on top of that sort of piece right there. And you can kind of look and see how that looks. So you can see right here, there's a little bit of a line and that's because that inside of that eye socket is intersecting with that, but we'll be able to just push that in. All you have to do is get a soft select or a sculpt tool up here and push that in. Now we can mirror this or we can simply hit control G to create a new group, which push, puts the pivot right there. And now before we duplicate this to the other side, we want to make sure that we have UVs set up. And so the end of this course, we want to have the UVs ready for taking them into Substance Painter in the next course. And so with our eyes, they should already have some UVs. This is the eye outer. Okay. And you can either keep this one. This is just, we're just going to have a transparent texture on this. And so you can either keep this or we can do a quick auto map. And the way I like to do these spheres, I'll usually do the, like the important half first. And so looking at this, you can see we've got the front and back. So this is going to be the front. And let's put our UV tools over here. So this is going to be the front. And so let's go ahead and select this. I am going to stitch together. And now I want to go in halfway and create some cuts here. So I'm basically going to create two shells that are sort of two half spheres. We'll select those. Let's go ahead and cut here. And then click here, stitch. There we go. And now it's a simple matter because we can just select those control drag to deselect those. Then we can hit. sew. do the opposite right there. And now we can grab these and do an unfold and an unfold. This is the important one, but we'll leave them both the same size and lay them out. Now this is just a transparent outer part of it. So it doesn't matter as much. If we go to the eye pupil, same thing, but I'm going to go ahead and select those and just do a quick planar map and let's do best plane. There we go. And I'll go ahead and just scale that down and we can actually put this on the same UV space as the eye itself or the inner eye. So this one, we will go ahead and do an automatic map. Now I'm going to cut this off at the edge of the iris there. So go ahead and select these edges. Go ahead and cut those. Select the front, right click to go to edges, stitch all those together and the same thing here. Okay. Now we want to, there's part of this we want to cut off, but let me unfold it first. So go ahead and select those and these UVs, you don't have to do them exactly the same. There's lots of different ways to do them. 
The cool thing is with an eye like this, you could actually leave them straight. Like if you had the, the inner part, if you had this all laid out straight, sometimes it's even easier to do it that way when you're creating the color for the iris. We'll unfold that and we'll go ahead and stitch together those and unfold. All right, so this will be the sclera and then we have the iris here. So let's go ahead and grab both of these. And you can, if you want to just hit layout and it'll lay them both out. A lot of times it won't give you the optimal layout and you'll be able to change it and make it a little bit better. But you wanna you know, use as much of the texture space as you can. So something like that. And then we can actually, we select multiple pieces. So if we select the pupil as well, we can then right click and place the pupil somewhere else where we can paint a black part of that texture. That way it doesn't need its own material necessarily. Uh, but if you wanna have, have its own material, but I know that we're not gonna have any uh, specularity on this material, even though we are on the outer one. So that's why I would leave that one separate. All right, so once we're done with the eye, if you've got the UVs on it, let's go ahead and delete the history on all of those. And let's take our of each one of these and we'll freeze our transformations. So now we can take the eye group. We can go ahead and hit Control G to group it, duplicate it, and then scale it in the negative X and freeze those transformations. And that will give us two eyes with UVs that we can paint in the next course. All right, so next, let's take a look at modeling a necklace. So let's say there's a piece that we wanna build here, a gold necklace that we didn't build in ZBrush. We can certainly continue to build pieces here in Maya. So we'll do that next.